And here they go. It's Benoit Kuznefois, it's Michal Kwiatkowski, who must be getting deja vu, because again he looks around. Once more will be being told in the radio about the gap. And they're about to hit the final run into the finish. They are not far from the Flam Rouge, and they're already playing games. They've got to keep riding together. Van der Poel looks around. And here comes Kuhn. A kilometre for the leaders. Breathless stuff as Van der Poel goes again. He won the Ronde van Vlaanderen right at the very last minute last week. He now approaches the final kilometre himself with Matthews looking around, not wanting to commit. Oh, 750 metres to the line now. Kuznefois, is it going to be the big moment in his career? Kwiatkowski, will it be yet again for him seven years after the first? But don't forget about what's happened before at this race. They keep riding. Don't think they're going to make the same mistake as last week at the Ronde van Vlaanderen. 500 metres now to go. Once more, they look around. Kwiatkowski's exactly where he needs to be as Benoit sets off in search of glory in the back. 350 metres. Kuznefois versus Kwiatkowski here. Will it be a first big day or a second title? Benoit is going and now they slow down. Now they slow down. Once more, they might let more into it. 250 meters. And it's Kuznefoy who leads it out after almost six hours of racing. Kuznefoy in the white there, ready to pounce, ready to go. Michal Kwiatkowski, Michal Kwiatkowski, trying to come around for Enios Grenadiers, but Kuznefoy holding, Kuznefoy's holding. He's going to the line. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Neck and neck. Kuznefoy was there. Kwiatkowski looks around. They don't know who's won it. They don't know who's won it. Third place goes to Tish Benoit. And the sprint behind looks as though it's been won by camp of Trek Segafredo. Kuznefoy on the radio. He waits, he watches, and it's like last year all over again. Victor here seven years ago. Second place finisher, and we have it. It is you. It is you. You better believe it. Benoit Cousinefoy is the first Frenchman to win the Amstel Gold Race for 41 long years. And here is that moment where we had to wait to separate them. Fiatkowski was in the right position. 200 meters to go. Had him where he wanted. But he just couldn't get back on level terms quick enough. With 100 meters to go, he started to open up and come round Cousinefoy and into, oh, it's the, down to that throw to the line between the two of them. Here you see the side on shot. Well, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Because, no, 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 no. The drama continues because on this evidence, it is not Benoit Cousinefoy. The French drought will go on. And seven years after his first victory, Michal Kwiatkowski is confirmed as the winner of the Amstel Gold. Drama to the very last and after the race. Oh, and how must he feel? Well, somebody before told him that he won before we'd had a chance to see the replay. There is the replay. There's clear photographic evidence. It's not like last year where you could look at it a hundred times and, and it still struggle, still struggle to decide. Here, Michal Kwiatkowski has that sprint. He has the win. Oh, was he made to suffer? <laughs> you feel for Kuznefroy as well. And when you've gone through that emotion, being told that you've you've taken the victory and you you're full of delight and at such a, a point, I mean, it's almost speechless. You saw the body language and the clear emotions from uh, Kutowski of, of, of being upset that he's missed out on the on the victory and this is the moment where he finds out he's taken his second victory at Amstel Gold Race and Todd Pidcock well who celebrates with him he was on the other end of that last year second to Van Aert. and it's been quite the day